Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for the GRE. We have been solving math problems out of this book here, the official guide to the GRE, the third edition. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Today is our lesson number 129. Day Day 3129, 3 is to signify the fact that we are in the third edition. Third edition, day 129. And today we'll do the second to the last problem, the penultimate problem in the book, problem number 18 that you will find on page number 223. Before we get going with the problem here, here's the quick summary of what's been going on. This, this problem that we're about to do comes from data analysis exercises. And here is how the layout went. We did not do this problem in order, so I'm going to quickly go over, go over this, uh, this problem. Problem number 11 through 15 dealt with the notion of probability, and we covered those from day number 101 through 115. There were 15 of them, even though there are only 5 problems. There were 15 videos from day 3101 to 3015. Problem number 6 through 10 were covered on day 3116 to 3120, and they were dealing with the notion of permutation and combination. You will find three examples. Example 4.6.1 to 4.6.3 on page number 317, 318 and 319 and those were done on day number 121, 122 and 123. Problem number 1 through 5 were done on day number 3124, 25, 26 and all the way up to 27. Yesterday we did problem number 16 and 17 which was our day number 3128. And today, as I said, is our penultimate day, and today we'll do problem number 18, and then tomorrow we'll do the very last problem. Tomorrow we'll do the very last problem, which is going to be day number 130, 3130, that is. together, there are going to be 130 videos, and by tomorrow we will have covered every single math problem that you see in this book. Only thing that will be left at that point after tomorrow, the only thing that will be left at that point are the two exams that are given in the end, two tests that are given at the end of the book. I have not made up my mind yet whether or not what, whether or not I want to spend the time to do those two exams. If I end up doing it, then so be it. If I don't, then so be it as well. I haven't made up my mind. But tomorrow will be the last day for the actual problems that are in the book other than the exams. Okay, let's get going. Enough of the talk. Problem number 18. Problem number 18. It, it is, as we said, the penultimate problem. As we already know, penultimate is just a very fancy way of saying second to the last, second to the last problem second to the last rather, penultimate simply means second to the last. A word that we learn in our vocabulary lessons, a word that we learn on our, in our vocabulary lesson on day number 11 if you recall, if you've been watching the vocabulary videos, as I've said many many times, you must not ignore the second half of the exam, the, the verbal section of the GRE, and the most important part in the verbal section is having uh, the vocabulary, knowing the GRE words. You must work on the vocabulary as well. Just type in, just type, just type in GRE vocabulary words, day number 11, and you will learn the word penultimate. Yesterday we learned, we were talking about the word not. So here's the problem, the very last, second to the last problem rather, not, not the ultimate problem, but the penultimate problem, problem number 18. We are given two figures, we are given the figures for 2001 and the year 2025, which, is, which, are, the, which are the projections obviously. Projected figures for the year 2025, actual figure as it existed, as, as they existed in year 2001 for these different sectors in the industry, in the, in the economy. Manufacturing, clerical, agricultural service, managerial, sales, and professional. Because, and altogether we are told that there are 150 million total workers in the workforce in 2001, and it is projected that our workforce is going to be made up of, it will, will comprise of 175,000, 175 million. In other words, we expect our workforce to go up by 25 million people from year 2000 and 2025. And these are the percentages for each of the respective sector. Manufacturing, 28% of all the 150 million workers were employed in manufacturing. Clerical employed 20%, agriculture employed 80%, 15%, and so on and so forth. And here are the figures for 2025. Let's look at the first question. It is important that you have the book in front of you, as I always remind you. Turn to book, turn to page number 323, and read the problem with me as we are doing it. You understand? Don't just depend on my reading the problem to you. That's not how it goes. Pro part A. Part A says, in 2001, in 2001, 
how many categories how many categories how many categories I can't spell it how many categories each how many categories each comprise more than more than 25 million workers how many categories comprise more than 25 million workers for the year 2001 in year 2001 in year 2001 we know that we had a total of 150 million workers question is out of those 150 million workers how many how many of this category employed more than 25 million workers more than 25 million workers so let's do the work we need the room I don't want to erase that part we do we do need a little bit of room so I'm going to erase some of these categories here you already have them so let's erase them so 25 million workers so we're looking for how many were employed which categories employed more than 25 million workers 25 million workers is a cutoff but the total was 150 million total was 150 million millions cancel out 25 divided by 150 if you divide top and bottom by 25 we find that 150 is made up of 625 625s are 150 so let's divide top and bottom by 25 25 is going to go away and 150 will become 6 150 will become 6 in other words now the question reads, now the question reads, in 2001, how many categories each comprise more than one, which each employed rather, instead of comprise, in 2001, how many categories each employed more than sixth of all the worker, more than sixth of all the worker, one sixth. Well, let's carry on here. We know, we know that one third, everybody knows that one third is made up of 33 and one third person, right? Okay, stay with me in the story. One third is made up of 33 and one third person. So it will be fair enough, it will be reasonable enough to say that one third is approximately 33 percent. Of course, one third is approximately 33 percent. 33 and one third percent, if you want to be precise, but approximately 33 percent. If one third is approximately 33 percent, then it stands to reason that one sixth, which is half of one third, should be approximately 16 and a half percent. Because half of 32, half of 32 is 16, and then half of 1 is 1 half. 1 six, one third, one sixth is approximately 16 and a half percent. So now the question is, in 2001, how many categories each comprise more than 6 and a half percent of the labor force? More than 6 and a half percent of the labor force. More than 6 and a half. So this, this turns out to be more than 6 and a half percent of the labor force. But let's find out. Now we're done. How many categories? employed more than more than six and a half percent well it's right here we're looking for 2001 you understand not 2025 not 2025 2001 well here we go manufacturing employed 28 percent of all the workers so that's more than 16 and a uh, 16 and a half percent clerical clerical category employed 20 percent of the labor force so that works manufacturing works and agriculture employed 18% and 18% of course is more than 16 and a half so these three categories manufacturing clerical and agriculture were the three sectors were the only three sectors where more than 16 and a half percent of the labor force was employed those were the only three categories where more than sixth of the labor force was employed let's do part B let's do part B Part B says the ratio of workers ratio of workers in agricultural in two thousand one to two thousand and twenty five. The question is what is the ratio? of the workers employed in agricultural sector in 2001 
to 2025. Well, let's let's take a look at it, shall we? It's, it's right here. It's right here. All of this right here. So the ratio is 2001 to 2025. Oh, what do we find? Let me change the marker. This marker doesn't have much ink. Doesn't have much ink left. I don't like it. In 2001, here we go. In 2001, in 2001, first of all, we have 150 million workers, and we're looking for agriculture. Agriculture is right here. So it is 18% of 150 million. Agriculture employed 18% of the workers, 18% of the workers, 18% of 150 million. Watch what happens. Okay, watch what happens. And in 2025, in 2025, first of all, we have to keep in mind that by the time we get to 2025, the to total workforce is 175 million. And out of 175 million in agriculture, 24% are employed. 24% of 150, or 175 million. You see how it's easy? 175 million. 24% of, of means multiply. Of means multiply. Let's change that to multiplication sign as well. That's it, we're done. We just have to reduce it. Here's how it's gonna go. Here's how it's gonna go. We're gonna pick up some speed. Let's divide top and bottom by 6%, not 6, not 6, but 6%. If you divide 18% by 6%, it just becomes one third. The percentage size disappears. The percentage sign is going to disappear because percentage means decimal, decimal. In, in essence, we're dividing top and bottom by 6 and then by 100. They're going to kill each other. So 18% divided by 6% is just one third. So let's divide top and bottom by 6%, 18% divided by 6% is just 3, and 24% divided by 6% is just 4. You with me? We have 150 here, we have 175 here, and we know, we know that 4, we know that 4 25s are 100, of course. If I have 4 25, 125, 225, 325, 4 25s are 100. And we know that if we have two more 25, six 25s, we know are 150. Six 25s are 150, seven 25s are 175. So let's divide top and bottom by 25. If you divide up, first let's, let's divide top and bottom by million. If you divide top and bottom by million, if you divide top and bottom by million, we can get rid of this bloody thing. Now let's divide top and bottom by 25. 150 has six 25, 175 has seven 25. You with me so far? Let's erase this part, we no longer need it. Keep track of all the things that we have so far. So on the top we have a 3, we have a 6, on the bottom we have 4 and a 7. I see a 4 and I see a 6. Let's divide top and bottom by 2. If we divide top and bottom by 2, 4 will become 2 and 6 will become 3. There you go, we are done. We are done. So now we have here 3 times 3, which is 9. And here we have 2 times 7, which is 14. Well, that's our answer. Question was, was the ratio of the workers in 2001 employed in agriculture to the number of workers employed in agriculture in 2025? The answer is, the ratio is 9 to 14. For every 9 workers of the total labor force in 2001 that were employed in agriculture, there were 14 workers were employed, oh, 14 workers were employed in 2025 of the labor force. The ratio is 9 to, 4, 9 to 14. For every 9, there were 14 in 2025. Let's do part C. We need the room again. I'm going to erase this thing in a second. Just give me one second. Part C says... From 2000... 2025 from from 2000 to 2025 I'm not, I'm not going to write everything because we don't have the room from 2000 to 2025 the number of workers will increase in which of the following three categories. So they give us three categories and our job is to ascertain in which of these categories the total number of workers that are employed will increase from 2001 to 2025. From 2021, 
2001 to the projected figure for 2025. The first category is sales. The first category is sales. Let's take a look at it. Sales, in, whether it's 2000 or whether it's 2001, really doesn't matter. It's actually 2001. It really makes no difference. Do you understand? Don't fuss about it. In sales, in 2001, where is the sales? Oh, I erased it. I erased it. So I'm just look at the figures, uh, look at the chart, look at the book. You will see that in 2000, in 2001, the sales was 1% of 150. In 2025, it is projected to be 2% of 175. Obviously, obviously, a bigger percentage, a bigger percentage, 1% as opposed to 2%, a bigger percentage of a bigger number, 150 as opposed to 155, a bigger percentage of the bigger number, of course it's going to be more than that. We don't have to do anything here. Don't have to, don't have to waste your time doing a calculation. Sales works. It is true that in the category of sales, more people will be employed in 2025 than were employed in 2000. That's all it's asking. That's all it is asking. It says, from year 2000 to 2025, number of workers will increase in which of the following three categories? And we just established that the number of workers will indeed increase in the sector of sales. Let's look at the second one, which is services. Service industry. In the service industry. In service industry, we have 15% of 150. Service is also erased, we don't have it here. 15% of 150 versus 16% of 175. Again, it's a damn silly thing to ask. It's just it's a bloody annoying thing to ask because, because the answer is bloody obvious. Obviously, obviously a bigger percentage, 16% as opposed to 15%, Obviously, obviously a bigger percentage of a bigger number, because 150 to 175, a higher percentage of a bigger number, of course it's going to be more than this quantity. We don't have to worry about what that thing actually is. We don't have to waste our time to figure out what that figure is. 15% of 150, whatever the bloody hell that is, is got to be less than 16% of 175. So service also works. More people were indeed improved. More people were, or rather, more people not were, because we're talking about 2025, so it's a future tense. More people will indeed be employed. More people will be employed in 2025 in the service sector than they are today. Than they are today. Let's look at the last one. The last category that they give us is clerical. Let's see what, what the figures are for clerical. It's right here, as a matter of fact. We did not erase the clerical one, so we have the figures here. 20% of 150, 20% of 150 versus 18% of 175. Okay, watch what happens. We don't have to figure out the actual figures, do you understand? Learn to take shortcuts. 20% of 150 versus 18% of 175. This could very this could very well be the quantitative comparison question. Could very very easily be the same exact question could appear in the quantitative comparison question. This is your column A. This is your column A and this is your column B. And if you call if you understand that this is a quantitative comparison question, if you understand that notion that this is essentially a quantitative comparison question, then we understand that we don't have to compute anything because the bloody thing is called quantitative comparison, not computation. We don't have to compute anything. We simply have to be able to compare and ascertain which quantity is bigger, which is a big difference. Do you understand? If somebody tells me which one is bigger, 5% of 3,000 or 2% or of 100, I'm not going to sit there and compute to tell the answer. Obviously, 5% of 3,000 is going to be more than 7% of 2% of 100 because it's a higher percentage of the higher number. Just like we did A and B, except here it's not that straightforward, but still we're going to compare, we're not going to compute. What happened? Watch what happens. So let's begin this story, shall we? Let's begin this story. I see 150, I see 175, let's divide both columns. Think of this as column A and column B. Let's divide both columns by 25. If we divide both columns by 25, 150 becomes 6, 175 becomes 7. We're dividing both columns by 25, just like we did before. Just like we did before, 
150 is made up of 625, 175 is made up of 725. I see 20, I see 18, let's divide both, let's divide both columns by 2%. If you divide both columns by 2%, 20% divided by 2% will become 10, and this will become 9. So, so far, this is what we're looking at. Let's put the boxes around them so we can keep them separate. That's it. We're done. Can you tell which one is bigger? 10 times 6, which is 60, or 9 times 7. 9 7 is 63. Can you tell which one is bigger? Obviously, it is bigger. Obviously, this quantity is bigger. So, it turns out that in all of the three categories, they had given us three categories and they were asking us in which of these following three categories will we have more workers employed in 2025 compared to the year 2001. And the answer is all three of them. All three of these categories are such that they will, having, they will end up having more workers employed in year 2025 than there were, uh, than the number that was employed in 2001. Do you understand? So tomorrow will be the last day. Tomorrow most likely will be the farewell. As I said, I do not know whether I want to do the problems in the, in the two exams that are given at the end of the book. I might do them. But most likely I will do them, depending on how lazy I feel. If not, if I feel lazy, then tomorrow will be the last day. Because tomorrow we'll do the very last problem, problem number 19. And altogether, in that case, we'll end up having 130 lessons. Because the story began with day 3001. Day 3001 is where the story began. Because as I repeat in every video, 3000. The thousand digits was to signify that we were doing the problem from the third edition. Do you understand? Because I also have problems that I had done years ago from the first and the second edition. So to keep them separate, I started putting 3,000, uh, the thousand digit to keep them separate. Because eventually I'm going to do fourth edition and people will get confused. So fourth edition obviously will start with the day 4001. Do you understand? I'll see you tomorrow, okay? Bye now.